Welcome back to my channel, Divinely Guided Tarot. If you're new here, my name is Angel, and I'm here to bring you another general collective energy reading. This message could be for all signs, so please remember to take only what message resonates with your particular situation. Leave the rest behind. And as always, guys, thank you so very much for everything that you do to help this channel grow. I, I really couldn't do this channel without you, and I'm grateful for each and every one of you. Your energy is beautiful. I do enjoy <laughs> reading these messages for you. So um, before we get started, we are going to be pulling our energy um and using our places oracle cards here and we're going to be doing what i like to call a places reading where the holy spirit is going to be calling you to what kind of places that you're going to be called to in the future here um so i'm going to kind of pull your energy in this way we're going to do that kind of a reading so holy spirit please come through Please shield, guard, protect this portal while I channel divinely guided messages for my beautiful subscribers. Help me with messages that they need to hear at this divine right time. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, guys, so for our places reading, I'd like first Holy Spirit to know um, where my collective is being called to right now. Right now, some of you are being called to do agricultural work, livestock rearing. We could be listening to me um, doing actual farm work. Um, so it looks like you are going to be called to a more fruitful kind of area, a place where um, there's a lot of help that's actually wanted. I feel like there's always a job to do at a farm, right? There's, there's always something that can be done. There's, if you are an idle person and you work on a farm, you're not doing a very good job because there's always, there's always work to do. It never stops. Um, it's like raising kids. It just never stops. <laughs> it's dedication. So I feel like you're going to be in a place where there's going to be a lot of help that's wanted, a lot of help that's needed, and a lot of um, willing acceptance of your particular kind of help. You, We may not be talking necessarily about an actual farm, like you're actually going to be helping out with cattle or something like that. We could be talking about just that energy. Farm life and farm living is not easy. They start early, they're up before the sun is up, they're in bed long after the sun goes down and they're exhausted. They drive themselves to work the land and they usually don't take a whole lot back for themselves because they've invested right back into the land. So you could be going into an environment or being called to an environment um, where they need your help, okay? Your particular help. So you could also be starting to channel in individuals who are in need of your wisdom. Maybe you're able to talk people, maybe the place that you're going to be called into is going to be a place where you're going to be able to breathe a lot of life into that environment. Maybe it's a toxic environment where they have a lot of turnaround. Maybe a lot of over, um, maybe like employees that don't really last more than a couple of months. Maybe there's a lot of negativity in this workplace. Maybe there's a lot of heartbreak. Maybe there's a lot of negativity in there. So you're going to be called to help out people that have experienced a lot of heartbreak style of energy or people who feel broken down and emotionally lost, right? Right? Let's say somebody is grieving over the loss of a parent or the loss of a sibling or a loss of a loved one. A lot of broken people can bleed their pain into an environment and create a toxic situation. So I feel like you're going to be helping people with um, survivor guilt. That's 
big right here, survival guilt. Somebody feels guilty for surviving. Somebody cared for their parents at the end of their life. And they ended up having to give their life in order to take care of their, their ailing parent. And it zapped their, their whole life away. And then that person felt guilty for, you know, feeling bad because their whole life has been spent babysitting their, their mother or their father or never being able to take their eyes off of them. I mean, it's, it's debilitating to have to take care of your parent in that way. And then you feel bad because of it. It's that compassion grief. You know, I feel like you're going to be dealing with a lot of that kind of situation. Ooh, okay, so you're helping out a little bit of an older crowd. We're not talking about a millennial crowd. You're talking about a, a little bit of an older crowd here. Um, maybe you meet somebody at a bench or in a park. Maybe you're called to go to a public place where the same people are running or the same people are visiting with their dogs or going for walks. There's going to be an individual that you're going to be helping out on one of these, these benches. Okay, so we could be talking about, um, I can see how my angels are kind of shifting that older kind of feel here, that compassion grief, taking care of an elderly parent. I can see them bleeding that into this card as well. That there are people out there that can take care of themselves. They're just older. They sit down a lot. You're going to see them on park benches everywhere. And they're going to be there every single day. There's going to be that group of men that always go to McDonald's at 6 o'clock in the morning and sit there with the coffee. And they just sit there and BS about everything and anything. They just buy a cup of coffee. You're going to feel like you see those, those people all the time. This is an opportunity for you to extend a kind hand and just give them a little bit of conversation. Sit down next to somebody and strike up a conversation with them. You know, help breathe life into them. You know what our elderly population ends up suffering from the most? They die from loneliness, people ignoring them, not talking to them, people of, like avoiding them like the plague, you know? So the next time you see an elderly person sitting by themselves, think about that, remember that, that they would do anything just to have a little bit of conversation with somebody. Just dialogue, like banter back and forth about anything and everything. Whatever you would talk about with anybody else, they just want to be remembered. They don't want to be forgotten just because of their age or treated like they're an invalid or wouldn't understand anything you say just because they were born in a different century than you live in right now, you know? A lot of us were born in the, 20, the 20th century, but we're going to be elders in the 21st century, a lot of people can have a type of stereotype about us um, or you. So show them that you know what to do. We have overhead shelters, protective canopies, rooftop views. We have somebody that's being elevated to see the stars. So you may be going to some rooftop events or rooftop parties or places where you are elevated up on um, like a pier or it's it's might not be rooftop per se, but it may be something out in the open. I see a lot of stargazing and a lot of lights, a lot of barbecues. Um, so yeah, you could be experiencing a lot of rooftop parties right now, or maybe you have a grow house, like grow boxes on top of a roof environment, and the tenants from a building are able to grow their own vegetables or something on the roof. You know, I mean, like, like something like that. You may be spending a lot more time outside. I see somebody buying a telescope or has a telescope, but they've never used it or finding a joy in astrology this year because the stargazing on this card for me is real important even though it's 
bright out. There's no stars on this card. This is a place where it would be optimal for you to be able to stargaze. Now, depending on how big the city is and how much ambient light that you're seeing, you can at least get a pretty decent good view of the moon, right? Um, you know, so I feel like there's a lot of activities that you're able to do and a lot of magical things that you can do without spending a whole lot of money just in your own building by spending some time outside. Maybe you go on the rooftop and you go lay out and, and try to get a suntan this year. You know, and you're like, I'm not going to be ashamed of it. You know, if anybody comes up, well, then I guess George the maintenance man is going to see a bikini. <laughs> you know what I mean? So um, there's some rooftop activity. This is some outdoor activity. This is a place that you're going to be spending a lot of time at, particularly this summer, spring and summer. I feel a lot of growing, um, like your hands in dirt. Like I can smell dirt, like fresh dirt. And I can smell herbs on your hands. So it makes me feel like you have a little garden going on. We have the grassland coming out here. Open expanse, grazing ground, sunlit grass. You could be going into wide open spaces this year. Um, maybe you're looking to branch out. Maybe you're looking to stretch out your view to look at distant horizons for yourself. And I feel like you have safe pastures to go run in fields of wheat. Um, you have this green light ahead of you. And I feel like this green light all has to do with your journey. Like the possibilities are endless. There's no predators on this grassland. There's no velociraptor coming out of the, out of the tall grass. There's, there's no um, obstacles in your way. There's no sharks. There's no dinosaurs. There's no nothing, right? All you have is God's gentle, divine love shining down on you. So what are you going to do with it? You're going to branch out. You're going to stretch out. Maybe you're going to go dash off and start running because you want to see how far you can go. Maybe you want to jump up on top of this hill and then roll down it and just giggle and laugh the entire time. But whenever you stop, that's where you're going to land. As far as you can throw that, that rock out into the middle of the pond, right? That's as far as your reach is. So I feel like God's saying stretch, reach, go out into the open. Reach for those infinite possibilities. So there's some changes coming up on your horizon here. And God's asking you to trust that instinct to explore. So a lot of exploring kind of energy. Floral delights, gardening, joy, blossoms and color, plant care. There's that gardening energy I was picking up a few seconds ago. Yeah, that rooftop. Somebody's going to have some um, gardening spaces or gardening boxes that are assigned to you that you'll be able to grow some vegetables in, get some herbs uh, started, you know, maybe do some tomatoes, maybe do, um, lemon verbena, you know, whatever you want to do. I think it's beautiful. Somebody's going to be growing an eggplant for the first time. It's not bad. Eggplants, fairly easy. You can grow them in a pot. Um, but I like this. This is, this is you, ah, you enjoying the sunshine and this is a form of exercise for you. So if you are looking for a good exercise that you can do on a day-to-day -day basis without exerting too much effort, but getting good sun on you and, you know, burning a few calories at the same time, start gardening, you know, do it for joy, do it for fun, research the things that maybe you want to use. If you're growing um, plants that you eat, make sure you use the plants that you eat and that you cook with them. Or um, if you're growing plants that are just beautiful to look at, maybe you want to try roses for the first time. You know, just research the thing that you want and make sure that you use it. So having fresh cut flowers inside your house can raise your vibration naturally. Did you know that? Everyone's going to go grow roses now, right? And you should, like, it's fun, you know, fresh cut flowers in the house are beautiful. For Valentine's Day, I plan on buying flowers for the channel and finally filtering out some of our winter stuff. You know, I kind of hold on to things 
a little bit too much. Um, but I'm going to be buying fresh uh, cut flowers for my collective here. Okay. So I would like a final message here. I would like a guardian angel to or a guide to come out here and uh, give us a, a final message because we found out all of these places that we're going to be going to we're going to be um, changing a lot we're going to be shifting a lot in our energy we're going to be helping a lot of people along the way you're going to be help changing the the perspective of how people think you're going to help people find God in the, the traumatic places of, of their life. We have Archangel Raziel. We have the Mysteries, the Protected Knowledge, and the Secrets card. So a lot of Akashic energy, Akashic record style of energy. Um, you're going to be guided into mysterious circumstances that you're not going to know make sense until somebody reveals to you that you were there, that you must have been sent by God. You're not going to understand a lot of how God is using you is what I'm trying to say. And that's okay. God wants you to be comfortable being okay with not knowing the full story, not knowing everything before you get into a circumstance. That God may call you to an environment where he wants you to strike up a conversation with an elderly woman on the bench who's feeding the pigeons. You know, and you're like, well, why? Why is that important? Maybe that elderly woman had gone weeks without speaking to a living soul. It happens, guys. Go walk into a nursing room, a nursing home. Some of these people go days without speaking a f an actual word to anybody. And this person thought, I'm, I think I'm going to die alone. And nobody could care less if I didn't show up on this bench tomorrow. The only... Things that ever care about me are these pigeons, you know, these birds that I feed at the park every day. And it's ridiculous that, that they should have to feel that way. But when the world forgets about the elder, the elderly, we may as well forget about our children and forget about our planet. I mean, we wouldn't be here without the elders. Um, secrets are going to be revealed about our own personalities that's going to change everything. The knowledge and the wisdom that God is granting you at this time is priceless. You're going to be learning some lessons and you're going to be teaching some valuable lessons to people just by living by example. Interesting. I like this energy. So Holy Spirit, give us a little bit more. Um, I want some closing messages. We've got two there and we've got one that flipped over there and I will close this message out for Monday hope everybody has a beautiful start to your week I hope that everybody gets everything that you're looking for this spring absolutely it says rescue me Lord from the evildoers protect me from violent souls who devise evil plans in their hearts and stir up war every day. They make their tongues as sharp as serpents. The poison of vipers is on their lips. Psalm chapter 140 verse 1 through 3. You understand that you're going to be coming across some opponents who are not going to want you to go to places where you're needed, where there's always help being asked for. God understands that the enemy is going to try to prevent you from healing broken hearts. He's going to want you to leave these people alone so they can be ignorant karmic souls who are just angry and sad and broken hearted so they take it out on everybody else. You're going to be preventing a lot of people from turning into monsters. Do you understand that? You're going to be banishing demons out of people's lives before the demons even can take hold. You know? The hills are alive with the sound of music. You are running through like the sound of music. Like I always get that with grassland pastures. You know? It's just bliss. Total bliss. 
So yes, rescue me, Lord, from the serpents and the poison of this world. Don't shake me from my course. Keep me a mystery. Keep me a secret, even to my enemy. Allow me to be cloaked in mystery that nobody knows my actions except for you, Father. You know, divine protection. It says, how priceless is your unfailing love, O oh God. People take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house. You give them drink from your river of delights. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light, we see light. Psalm chapter 36, verse 7 through 9. This is saying, guys, that you understand that God is wherever good is, wherever love is, wherever the light is. You understand that without God in your life, you would not be able to go to these places or do these beautiful things. You've had to learn a lot of lessons. And one of the major lessons that you learned, guys, was opening your eyes and seeing the world for what it actually is. God has revealed so many beautiful truths on your heart just because of your surrender and your ability to open up your eyes and see things for as they are. The world can be cloaked in mysteries and secrets, but God knows when to reveal what to whom. God will reveal to you what, what is important, what is a mystery. He's going to unravel all of those, those tongue twisters and he's going to highlight things for you to see. And then it's just, you're just going to suddenly know, right? I like that. Last scripture, it says, all scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness. Second Timothy chapter three, verse 16. This is telling me right off of the bat that you have a couple of scriptures that you keep close to you. Okay. I see uh, Psalm 91 popping up in my mind right now. And I don't know the words off by heart, but I believe this is the one where they talk about, um, God's chosen being protected. You know how the enemy will fall and how the enemy will not prevail. Um, so check out Psalm 91 if you are interested. But I, I believe that is a strong scripture that sticks on your heart. Um, there is a lot of scripture that is kind of flooding my mind right now. Each of you are holding on to different scriptures too that have enlightened you. That have brought you closer to peace total peace, like the peace that the Holy Spirit brings to you, that that grace that you have on you, this is scripture that's alive and moving through you. It changes you when you hear it. So hold on to those scriptures that changed you, that you use like life rafts and anchors and you hold on to God's words. And if you are finding the scripture here beneficial, um, feel free to, to take note of these and, you know, underline them in your Bible so you can go and filter through and maybe find something a little bit different. Or instead of reading just that one two liner, it's just a small section out of a particular chapter. Go into your Bible and read the full chapter, the words before and the words after. Sometimes you can collect a lot more information off of your favorite scriptures just by going into the Bible and reading the full chapter of it, which is, you know, not very much. <laughs> but um, you might get a different meaning out of a, a particular uh, phrase, out of a particular chapter. Things can always be taken out of concept, on con out of concept, you know, context. Excuse me, I apologize. Guys, my tongue is like all being twisted up right now. So and I think it's just because I'm tired. So I think I'm going to go ahead and close this message out. I apologize. Um, so guys, I hope you like the places reading. I hope you like the places that you're going to be called to. 
and I'm real excited to see what you're going to be growing this spring and summer. Um, I think you guys have some big plans for a big garden this year. Somebody's got the green thumb on them. And I'm real excited to see what you're going to be doing with this garden of yours. Um, so guys, no matter where you are in the world, take care of yourselves. Have a beautiful rest of your week. God bless each one of you.